Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is linear algebra. Um, today, what is orthogonality or basically right angles? What are right angles in, in linear algebra? And um, basically how to generalize the notion of a right angle. Because orthogonality is a very powerful concept in mathematics, but it's not restricted to, to those guys only. Okay, so some, some flavors of 90 degrees. Um, so let's start with an example all of us know, and we try to generalize from there. That's kind of what we do in mathematics all the time, right? So um, the standard example is, well, we are here in R2, right? And in R2, if you have two vectors in R2, you have some kind of the standard in a product. Uh, it's very easy. So V is whatever, V1, V2, the vector. And W is the same as W, right? And you can just pair them with this inner product, which is just a map from R2, R2 cross R2 to, let's say R, let's work with the real numbers in, in, uh, throughout this, um, this video. Um, and then you can, so then you can write down the, um, the standard inner product by just component wise multiplication and then add everything up. And you get an element in R. And the standard way of now defining orthogonality here, which is really the 90 degrees version, that exactly the one you, you know from whatever, from classical Euclidean geometry, would be two things are orthogonal, that's this symbol in general, um, if and only if the inner product is zero. Um, that's just a calculation you do. Uh, you can believe me, or maybe you've already seen it. it. Doesn't really matter. But the standard notion of being orthogonal is encoded in this inner product being zero. So v is orthogonal to w if and only if this thing here vanishes. And um, what you then would do is, in order to analyze this a little bit, um, let's say geometrically, you would you would take the, the function with itself, that's a function from, so, so v, uh, v, v, v pad with V, that's a function from R2 to R, and you can plot height lines, right? So uh, geodesics of this function by saying, okay, this is some value R and whatever. And what you get are those, because, well, just rewrite it, you get basically V1 squared plus V2 squared equals R, and these are up to taking a square root. Well, square root doesn't matter here so much. These are basically circles around the origin, as you can see it here. So each of these lines is actually a fixed R. And the point is orthogonality will move along those, those uh, geodesics. So if you have two vectors, or two vectors, they, all, they lie on the line. So I have a green vector pointing in this direction, and I have an orange vector pointing in this direction then it's, I mean, there's a standard basis vectors in this case. So uh, one zero and zero one, and it's easy to see that they are orthogonal in, in my definition, obviously, because zero times one is zero plus one times zero is zero. And you move them along. So let's say you want to move the green one along then it moves along those circles and the corresponding orange vector um, moves exactly along the circles and exactly kind of the same speed. Um, so all of these points here, let's say, would have a vector here, and then you get the, this vector moves to here, and so on, whatever. This little thing moves to here. Why? Same time, this little thing moves to here. Ooh, this was really bad. This little thing moves to here. And this is a kind of a standard Euclidean geometry. Everything is just encoded into this in a product, which in this case is just with a plus sign in the middle, you take the coordinates. Um, so that was kind of well known for, for, for ages. And it, it's really classical it's Euclidean geometry, just in some kind of um, Cartesian way of doing it, some, some coordinate way of doing it. And then people start to realize that there are other types of geometry. 
which is worthwhile as a topic for another um, for another video. Mm. And in other parts of geometry, slightly weird things happen, but they're only weird because we're not used to them. They're not really weird. They're, they're, they're as legit as, as this, um, this picture, which is familiar to all of us. So let's have a look. Um, so now you basically play the same game. And what kind of people realized is, well, whenever you have some reasonable form of an inner product, we will see this later, then orthogonality should be defined as, well, the inner product vanishes between two vectors. And now it depends on your choice of inner product, what this really means in practice. The point is, all of these with notions of orthogonality will satisfy kind of the same patterns. You, you could talk, talk about orthogonal complements uh, and so on. So also normal basis, orthogonal basis and so on. It's all the same. They just have slightly different geometric flavor. And depending on what you want to do, this might be the right way of doing it. So this here is kind of hyperbolic geometry, a hyperbolic example. Um, it, it basically appeared as a first example of, of non-Euclidean geometry. Maybe spherical one was the first one, but it doesn't really matter. One of the first examples um, plays a big role in special relativity, for example, so like, like, like Minkowski space or whatever. So the point is, you don't need to, to not know all of that. The point is, depending on what life gives you, right, it might be worthwhile to study a different inner product, which is a different kind of geometry. And for that inner product, all the notions of, of orthogonality are in, uh, encoded in the vanishing of the thing. Just that the, the, the appearing orthogonality looks a little bit different um, to us. That's just what it is, because we are certainly very used to this Euclidean kind of idea, because that's how our world looks like in some sense. Now, also, well, we just can't see it. Also, it's more spherical. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so, so um, don't be fooled by appearance. The definition of orthogonality, which is which is the one you want to take, is take some reasonable form of an inner product and vanishing of the inner product is orthogonality. It just might look different. So let's go to the example. It's it's kind of the same example. I start with R2, and I start with two vectors. Here's one, and here's one. Same as before, and they're still orthogonal. The only thing I change is I put a minus. I put a minus, uh, so this minus, of course, in the definition. So let's have a look here. It was a plus, right? And the only thing I change is I put a minus here, and I, I get a completely different kind of completely different geometry, the completely different looking answer, because now um, at the corresponding equation v v, right? The the geodesics you want to draw is v v one squared minus v two squared. And you want this to be some geodesic R. And in this case, you get those hyperbolas. Like this would be one, the green one. Um, now I have to take a look, this one. So that the two parts of it. And depending where you are, so this is this is a funny thing here. So in the middle, this cross here, plop, that's the part where R equals zero. Okay i equals zero this upper and the lower half that's the part where r is lower than zero depending a bit on your conventions of course and this left and right right and left thing is the part where r is bigger than zero and vectors from r bigger than so, so the r equals zero case is a bit weirdish because this is degenerate on this r equals zero case don't worry about it too much you can just ignore it for now and um Vectors in here are always orthogonal to vectors in the purple part. But so which, which was different here, because here, kind of vectors in here are orthogonal to vectors in here, and vectors in gray are orthogonal to vectors in uh, purple. So it's a 90 clock degree, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a turning. Of, of orthogonality, where, where here it's kind of a slightly weird form of orthogonality, whatever. And um, 
the orthogonality, so here's my, my, my moved green vector and here's my moved orange vector. The orthogonality now moves along those hyperbolas, right? It moves along like here. So they get more, orth they, they get, so if I move um, green in counterclockwise direction, it, it will never get into the, um, into the upper region. It will always stay below this, uh, whatever it is, yellow, yellow line. It goes, goes slightly along the super hyperbola, but at the same time, it's orthogonal vector moves in clockwise direction. So they kind of want to meet here at this line. They never really do, but anyway. Um, the point is, I only change the minus sign in the definition, and I get a really nice and completely different looking geometry. You get this geometry along hyperbolas instead of geometry along circles. Um, and, but, but still, all the properties you would like to write down or most of the properties you would like to write down for orthogonal vectors, orthogonal bases or whatever, they still hold perfectly fine um, in hyperbolic geometry, in, in this form of geometry. Maybe there's a slight catch along this line i equals zero because it's really a bit special, but otherwise there's no reason to prefer this model over this model. And that's the whole idea of generalizing orthogonality. And that's where it started. And later people realized that there, there's just a huge zoo of orthogonal things. So for instance, uh, this is a really different example in, in some sense, and it's still the same example in another sense. So still the same definition. It's orthogonal if some certain inner product vanishes. My inner product just looks a little bit strange. So it takes a function. Uh, it takes two functions and whatever. Let's say they're reasonable and have some reasonable output in R. So here's an example of two reasonable functions. And the inner product is defined to calculate the area underneath the product. In other words, to calculate, so this is a, a value in R, of course, it's area in the, underneath the product, the signed area, because it's the integral underneath the product. And well, whatever, you, let's say you take it from minus pi to pi because it fits to my example, but this is not, this is not really important. The point is that it's a product. So you start with two functions. Here I have two functions. I have this uh, greenish looking function that's sine x. You all know how sine x looks like. I have this, well, maybe it's orange looking function that's cosine 2x. Well, it's just a scaled version basically of cosine. And as you can see, that's what they do. And the inner product is this guy. And this is how the curve looks like. And uh, the, the product is this guy, this is how the curve looks like, and the inner product is now the blue area here. So that's the inner product. And they are orthogonal. Why? Well, you can see it because now the area vanishes, right? This bunch and this guy, they cancel out, whatever. This guy and this guy, they cancel out. And those two are left, those two cancel out. And the, the inner product is zero in this definition which is now kind of a weird form of an inner product, isn't it? Um, but still, it still has the same properties of, in some sense, the same properties of the, of the inner product from Euclidean geometry. And then people started to realize that this is the right definition. So you take some version of an inner product. Um, and basically the only, th it depends a bit what you want to do and there are various ways to generalize it. But basically what you want is you want to satisfy linearity and symmetry. And maybe you want to satisfy some of them, but you really don't know, you really don't need to. So you might need, have, you might have no condition. Just, just some inner product, some pairing that is linear and symmetric. And you would define orthogonality exactly what you, uh, as I just told you, Two vectors are orthogonal, so here's my vector space. Two vectors are orthogonal if and only if the inner product is zero. And as we have seen, this might take completely different, it's all of these are examples, of course, might take completely different incarnations, right? Here, circles, hyperbolas, something area function things. Um, and still, most of the properties are satisfied. You have to be a bit careful because, of course, you're generalizing something. But most of the properties carry along. Most of the properties you know about 90 degrees kind of carry along. And the point is a little bit like orthogonality is something like you can change one of the one of the uh, 
uh, uh, let's say you have two things, V orthogonal to W, you can change one of them without affecting the other. So they're kind of as independent as they could be. Okay, so things are orthogonal if they are as independent as possible in the setup of linear algebra. That's basically it. So let me tell you just one example, which I really like, and probably I will do some uh, video about it at one point. Um, the Chebyshev polynomials, they are defined by this recursion, whatever, whatever it is, that do, do, doesn't matter so much. A certain nice type of polynomials and they're indexed by natural numbers. Okay. And they play really, they kind of generalize the Fibonacci numbers and they, they, they uh, play a really important role in, in mathematics and the study of orthogonal polynomials. And the inner product is zero. So in some sense, they are so important because of the orthogonality, orthogonality product. So you, you kind of start, you have a whole family of them and all of them are orthogonal and they kind of form a nice basis of a nice space and have nice properties. That's what you would expect. It, it all comes out from the generalization of orthogonality just, uh, just, that I just told you. So um, here's an example. They're really cute. I'll show you the video in a second, but um, here's an example. So this is this orange polynomial, that's how they look like. Um, and then I have a green polynomial, here you go. And the inner product, this is like catch, you need to weight the inner product. So it was this weighting factor for a second or just ignore it. Basically the inner product from before, but you can redefine it by, by throwing in one of these those weights. It doesn't matter so much, basically you compute the inner product. Uh, you get a function and you can again see that everything cancels out. So this one and this one, um, something like this one and this one, and a really nice, nice pattern around the orange and this one and this one, and they are all thought. Okay, let me show you a, a, a video about those polynomials, just how they look like, because they're really good and you would never come up with this definition or with all of those properties if you wouldn't know the generalization of orthogonality. Okay, so here's my video. Um, what I want to compute is, as you can see, one of them is fixed, one of them is n equals 20, the other one is a varying n, and they will vary n. And this is just basically the output, so the inner product is the area, the blue thing. And you can already see this is n equals zero, and it definitely will cancel out. And it, it's a really beautiful pattern, you will see it. So I vary n and you will see the cancelling out of, of the area. Just keep watching uh, what happens to the area. Okay, here you go. As n increases, these are the functions. It whoop, goes all the way there. So it kind of, I could watch this the whole day. Um, it kind of stabilizes. So the last step is uh, n equals 20. And in n equals 20, they are, they are uh, so U two, un and un pair to a nice number. So that's the only thing that is not zero. And you can see it because then everything is above above the, uh, the x-axis. Otherwise you have this nice constellation and this kind of crazy uh, Fourier-like theory thing. And because of these nice patterns, you, might already imagine that those things, oh, it swings around, it's really, really beautiful. It swings around um, that these things satisfy some nice properties and they will be of importance in studying certain properties of function. And yes, they do. And I say it again, also because, I, in some sense, mostly because they have these nice orthogonality properties, which you can see here in action. Okay, but that's basically it. Let me just wrap up. So orthogonality is a generalization of what you know. It's defined with respect to something like an inner product and it's a vanishing of the inner product. It plays a crucial role in mathematics based in, and beyond, of course. If it plays a crucial role in mathematics, it will always play a crucial role beyond. Like um, those uh, funny functions here that I showed you play also a crucial role in physics, for example. Um, but anyway, then you generalize it and you realize, oh, most of the properties just, you just need to be a bit careful. Most of the properties still still hold and you have a new notion and something to play around with. So you get functions, you get hyperbolic geometry and so on. Anyway, I hope this was reasonably helpful and I hope to see you next time.